Welcome back my friends. Today I'm showing you three ways to change the colors inside of your ggplot. These tricks are all very easy to implement but the last one, oh yeah, that one is powerful. So stick around all the way to the end of this video and with that enough chit chat, let's go. So in our studio I've already prepared a basic ggplot using data from the Parma penguins package. Magnificent, isn't it? It's almost the best scatter plot ever. But what's a bit annoying is that the colors are just the default colors. Pretty boring, don't you think? So let's change this. The first thing you can do is to use the scale color brewer layer. This will automatically change the color to a color palette from the brewer package. Right now this uses a sequential color palette. You see it's basically one blue color that is getting darker and darker. And this is not something you want to use for these categorical variables that we have here. And if you look into the documentation of Scale Color Brewer and scroll all the way down, then you will see that there are a couple of palettes that you can choose from. Here we want to have something from the qualitative group. Maybe we'll just take the Set 2 palette to change the colors. So it's very easy to change your colors this way. Just take one of the presets. You could also take one of the pastel sets if you want, but it's not my cup of tea, so let's go with this one here. The same trick can be used in a very similar way by using the scale color Verides function. This uses a Verides color palette instead of a Brewer color palette. And we will need a discrete color palette because we're looking for qualitative colors and not a continuous scale. Again, applying this new layer changes the colors immediately. Maybe you want to have a different palette again, then we'll just use the options argument. And in the documentation, we can see that we have a couple of predefined options like Cvidas. Okay, so you can change the colors very easily. Now let me show you one more trick that I like to use for these kinds of scatter plots, which is kind of a bonus trick I have in store for you today. Here the yellow color isn't that nice to see, is it? So what I like to do, instead of mapping everything to the color variable, is to just take my code and everywhere where I have color, I will use the fill aesthetic instead. Now this doesn't look right because the standard GM point doesn't have a fill aesthetic. Therefore what you need to do is to change the shape to 21 which is a filled point instead of just a regular point. Then you can see the fill aesthetic. Now this will give us the default colors again. But we can use for example the same color palette from before and this didn't have any effect yet because we changed to the fill aesthetic. So therefore we change the scale layer to scale fill and then the colors change and the yellow colors are kind of easier to see because they have a black border around them. You could change the color of this border too, I don't know, maybe use gray 40 if you don't want to have this strong black. It depends on what you want to do, the choice is yours. In any case, this way you can make these kind of light colors easier to see. So yeah, this was the bonus trick. If you enjoyed it, then don't forget to hit the like button. Just find it and click it. I know you want to, so do it. In any case, let's move on to trick number two. This one is also very easy to implement. You just have to create a vector full of your favorite colors with their corresponding hex codes. Here I have used three colors from the Okabe Ito color palette. I've put a link to this palette into the video's description if you want to use it. Or maybe you have one color palette you always like to use or if not, you can also go to a color palette generator like Coolers. With Coolers, you can generate a new color palette by pressing the spacebar. You can pick some colors you like and then switch the other colors that you didn't like and that's how you can assemble the hex codes and put them into your colors vector. Okay, so that's how you put together a vector like this. And then we can take our plot, use scale color manual and use our colors vector in the scale function. But watch out, one of the things I often forget is to map the vector of colors to the values argument. The error will tell you that you have provided zero colors if you forget to map it to the values argument. But once you use the values argument, then everything looks pretty good. And you can not only make your plot better, but also your code. Here's a pro tip for you. Always set the names of your colors vector so that you can refer to these colors later on. In this case, I will use the species names for the names of the vector. And scale color manual will detect that and will use these colors for the specific species. This is a great way to make sure that for each species you always use the same color. For example, if you want to throw in a color text label of the species name later on, you can refer to the species name to get the correct color for the text label. It's a great tool, definitely recommended, 
It's a real pro tip to use names for your colors vector, so remember that. Finally, let me show you method number three. This one is very powerful because you can do a lot of customization inside of your plot with this. And what we want to do here is to take our code and change the data set before it even hits the ggplot layer. Just use a mutate call and in there you can specify for each entry which color you want to use. So right now my data looks like this and I want to include a new color for each entry. And the way to do that is to use some conditions for it. And since we are plotting bill lengths here, we can make the color dependent on the bill length. So let's use bill length millimeters and if that is less than 40, then maybe use this color here. And by the same logic, you can specify the other colors for the other conditions. For example, for numbers between 40 and 50, you can use this greenish color. And for numbers larger than 50, you can use this reddish color. And then you do not map the colors to the species column, but to your new column that contains the colors. Maybe let's just call this new column my color so that this mapping becomes more clear. And then we map it like so, but the result doesn't look at all like what we want to have. It doesn't even use the colors that we've specified. Instead, it creates a legend using these colors hex codes. And the way to fix that is to tell ggplot, you know what? We have mapped the color aesthetic to the my color column. So please use those data entries as they are. We can do that by using a scaled color identity layer. And this way you can color your points conditional on the data itself. This is a really great trick to, for example, highlight specific parts of your plot using color. All right, so these were three easy ways to change the colors of your ggplot. If you want to see more ways to use colors in action, then maybe check out this video next. There I show you how to use colors to highlight specific parts of your line chart. And if that is not of interest to you, maybe you will find some other nice video for you in the description below. And with that, let me say thank you for watching and I will see you next time.